In today's video, we're going to talk all about grid down doomsday resource maps. Let's get to it. If the grid were to go down, many would be forced to rely on analog information to know the whereabouts of resources that are vital to sustaining life and community. Unfortunately, now we live in the digital age, and most of us rely on GPS and online mapping tools to help us navigate the world. It is understood that if there was a nationwide prolonged power outage, in the absence of ground-based relays to GPS satellites, it would only be a matter of weeks before these satellites became inaccurate and essentially useless. Regardless, even if you have GPS, you would still require maps for it to be useful besides the logging of nominal waypoints, and a lot of people don't have offline maps on their electronic devices. Although there are apps to do this like we discussed in our survival apps video. And of course you can get dedicated GPS devices which have offline maps available. But in today's video we're going to discuss numerous points of interest in various mapping systems that you will benefit from having access to if the grid goes down. Now this video is not going to be about how to read a map because there's no sense in me reinventing the wheel. I will provide a link to a video which briefly and very simply explains the basics of map reading and how to tune in your compass. The purpose of this video is to help you identify points of interest that you would have on a doomsday resource map. Before we talk about different places of interest for your post collapse map, consider making a navigation kit. This should include maps, an orienteering or lens attic compass a pair of binoculars or a monocular, a notepad, preferably one that's waterproof, and something to write with. Some high-vis flagging tape, and if you really want to get primitive, some ranger beads. We'll talk about these items more in future videos. You may also want to consider a dedicated GPS device. Although modern smartphones with the right applications are pretty much just as good as these standalone GPS units, if you have the resources, it still doesn't hurt to have a dedicated system that is purpose-built solely for navigation. Some of these even have integrated walkie-talkies, satellite communicators, or distress beacons. If you are navigating with a map, the preferred type of compass is going to be an orienteering compass. This has a flat base plate that you use in conjunction with the map to find your proper bearings. It's extremely important that you understand how things like declination are going to factor into your use of a compass and a map. I'll post a link in the description which simply and succinctly explains this process for you. This will be absolutely essential for you to establish true north and therefore get the proper bearings to your destination. Now I would recommend having physical maps, but using offline map tools like MapMe or even downloading maps off of Google will also be useful. So long as you have a solar panel to charge your electronic device that you're reading the map on, you will have access to a map until you drop it on a rock and it smashes to pieces. Otherwise, I would recommend Backroad Map Books or the Backcountry Atlas. These Backroad Map Books provide in-depth topographical maps that are going to allow you to identify all the major features of the landscape that you're in. I would recommend getting one for the province or state that you live in and maybe even the states and provinces that surround it. Also, if you want larger in-depth topographical maps that are customizable for your region, you can special order and customize these through the website Track Maps. Here are some points of interest that you should consider having on your Doomsday Resource Map. Railroad Tracks As discussed in a previous video on where to bug out and how to get there, these will provide an excellent low-key way to travel in a grid-down situation, especially if you have no vehicle and you're wanting to stay off the roads. Train tracks always lead to civilization, and there is a vast intricate network of train tracks across North America. These maps are available to download online. In addition to that, abandoned train cars may have vital resources if you found yourself in a desperate situation. And of course, we're certainly not advocating breaking the law, but if we're talking about a grid down end of the world as we know it scenario, and that's your only means of survival, I guess people are gonna do what they have to do. Now, the next thing you're gonna wanna be mindful of are cell towers. Cell towers are everywhere and they'll make great repeaters for your off-grid comms. I'm gonna post a website where you can see all of the cell towers out there that are available. These also might make for good lookout points. 
Another type of map that you might want to consider, especially if you live in the city, is going to be the subway maps. There may be a disaster or a security issue which forces you to retreat into the subways. Having information about this vast underground network of tunnels definitely couldn't hurt in a post-disaster environment. Now oftentimes the idea of post-collapse scavenging is overstated. Unlike the movies, it's very likely that if you are scavenging an area that has resources, you will be met with resistance from other people who are trying to get those same resources. This is why the primary focus of this video is not just listing off a bunch of cool stores that you can go and loot and scavenge after it hits the fan. Rather, like most things on this channel, we like to focus on the more advanced, less obvious, high-hanging fruit that the majority of people, even preppers, aren't going to be focused on. That said, desperate times can call for desperate measures. So it's still good to have an awareness of where these places with supplies are if you have no other option. You may want to consider things like pharmacies, firearm stores, greenhouses, food distribution centers, and facilities that might store chemical fuels like propane. Even swimming pools will be a viable water source that not many people are going to be thinking about until everybody starts to think about it. Hardware stores and veterinary clinics for the medicine, these are but a few of the many places that you should probably take note of in your local community just in case it hits the fan. You'll also want to know where major government structures are like military bases and police barracks. These might be vital points of interest in a global conflict scenario. Another thing you might want to consider are solar and windmill installations. Know where these are as these are going to be a source of renewable energy. The next thing you're going to want to be mindful of are where are the nuclear power plants. You're going to want to know where these are because if there ever was a major disaster, these things could go into meltdown and that could lead to radiation sickness. Now there's another useful tool called the Nuke Map, which allows you to simulate the effects of nuclear strikes on various cities. It will also give you an understanding of where the fallout might be coming. So that's a useful tool that I've demonstrated on this channel before. Other points of interest are going to be prisons. You should know where the maximum security prisons are. If there ever was a grid down situation and prisoners were released or got out, then that could be a hotbed of potential activity to say the least. Another thing you may want to consider are crime maps of your municipality or state. Depending on where you live, there may be public access to this type of software and it will give you an idea of where the bad neighborhoods are in the town that you live in if you didn't already know. But this is also a useful tool if you're planning on strategically relocating to a new city or a new part of the state and you don't want to situate yourself smack dab in the middle of the red zone. Other useful things to put on your map are going to be hunting lands, nature preserves, protected wildlife areas. These will be places that will be teeming with wild game when the grid goes down. In the same vein as this and discussed in our recent video, you'll also want to know where the public land or crown land is. There are numerous maps online for crown and public lands within your area. This varies from state to state, so you'll have to do your own research. But the benefit of knowing where the crown land is, is that's going to be the land where resources may be most abundant, and you're not going to have to worry about infringing on other people's private property. Along the same lines is knowing where the good fishing is in your region. This may seem silly to some, but getting yourself a good back road map book will usually also indicate where some of the great fishing spots are. This can provide an abundance of protein and fats in a survival situation. There's also excellent websites like fishingstatus.com that offer a wealth of information for free to any aspiring angler. The next layer of map that you're going to want to have an awareness of are the plant hardiness zones. Every hardiness zone is capable of supporting different levels of plant life. This is vital information for your post-collapse garden. Now you may be tempted to accumulating map data about your entire country, but you gotta be realistic and understand that chances are you're only going to deviate a couple gas tanks away from your current location if the crap was to hit the fan. Which is not to say there might be a situation which required a mass exodus across the country. 
but it's a better investment of your time to focus on a 500 mile radius of your current location. And even that by many accounts is probably pushing it. Now we've already talked about lakes, but knowing where the water sources are, are going to be key. You may even want to go further and look into water treatment facilities. These may contain vital chemicals for purifying water. Another thing you're going to want to consider are various mines. I'm going to post a link in the description below of the different types of mines that you might come across in North America that might provide vital raw materials. Another thing, of course, that you would put on your personal resource map would be caches that you yourself have buried. We do plan on doing a video on caching in the future, so stay tuned for that. And last but not least, you should probably know where the marinas are so you could have access to boats if you had to bug out Pirates of the Caribbean style. Let me know what you plan on putting on your post-collapse grid down map in the comments section below. I will provide links to a physical backroad map service in North America, an offline map app, as well as a design your own topographical map website. I would also recommend the Kamenga compasses or Brunton compasses that I'll post links to to use in conjunction with your map. And lastly, if you wanted to take it to the next level, you could always consider a dedicated handheld GPS device. Some of these even have built-in satellite communicators, you know, for the first two weeks of the apocalypse at least. Let me know what sort of items you might add to your post-collapse resource map. Thanks for watching Canadian Prepper Out. The best way to support this channel is to support yourself by gearing up at CanadianPreparedness.com, your one-stop shop for premium, high-quality, brand-name products that have been tried and tested by myself and other YouTube gear reviewers. My subscribers save 10% off by using the coupon code SURVIVALPREPPER, all one word in all caps.